Hey everybody and welcome back. So I've officially got version 1.3.1 firmware running on the Canon EOS R6. If you wanted to see what that update brought with it, go ahead and check out my video that I made. That'll show you like the uh, different features that came with 1.3. And then we all know at this point about the problems that came up with the version 1.3 and then they put out the version 1.3.1 that fixed the issue that they were having in regards to locking up the camera when shooting at high frame rates with crop mode on. So anyway, we've got version 1.3.1 running now, and there were a couple of things that I really wanted to test out. One was gonna be if the overheating issue has gotten any better with the light compressions, and two was gonna be if the light compression has a significant amount of quality loss to the image. So what I did was I went and I set my camera up, and I set it up in the sun because I wanted to kinda of have like a real world situation going on with how I was setting up and running this test. So what I did was I started this and I was in 62 degrees Fahrenheit, camera was in the sun, and I did a cold start. And I started with a 25 minute timer. Again, I was at 62 degrees Fahrenheit and the camera was in the sun. Now I ran increments of 4K, 60 frames per second at 10 minute increments. So what I did was I ran a 10 minute clip and after that I was able to record 15 more minutes. I ran another 10 minute clip, I was able to record 5 minutes. I ran another 5 minute clip, I had another 5 minutes available for recording. After that 3 minutes I ran it and it overheated or the symbol for overheating popped up. I didn't actually shut the camera down but at that point you're only minutes away. So what I was able to get was a total of 28 minutes before it overheated, that's in 4K, 60 frames per second, IPB light. I could have gotten like two more minutes probably before it shut down, but again, I just stopped it as soon as the overheat symbol started to flash. Now, after I ran that and after I got the camera to the point where it overheated, another important thing to understand is how long it takes for this camera to cool down. So what I did was I just shut the camera completely off and then I just checked it, you know, in 10 or five minute increments. And what we ended up getting was 12 minutes of cool down time. I had 10 minutes of recording available. At 25 minutes of cool down time, I had 15 minutes recording available. At 35 minutes of cool down time, I had 20 minutes recording available. And at 40 minutes of cool down time, I still had 20 minutes of recording available. Now it took a full 75 minutes before I got back to my original 25 minute timer where I was able to record in 4K, 60 frames per second in C-Log 10 bit. So you're looking at 75 minutes. Now again, I left the camera in the sun while it was cooling down, so you might be able to get better results if you keep it out of the sun, or I'm sure if you rush into your car and put it underneath your air conditioner, I'm sure it'll cool down faster. But in the real world, you're gonna be looking at around 75 minutes before you get back to actually getting your full recording time back. So unfortunately, even with the IPB light compressions, the overheating has not gotten any better, at least in regards to 4K 60 frames, C-Log 10 bit. That's the only way that I ran this test this time. So I'll have to check it out with like a lower frame rate to see if it handles things better. But in 4K 60 frames per second, it's still overheating within the same amount of time that it was before with normal compression. Once we figured that out, the next thing that I really was concerned about was what's the quality loss in the IPB light compression versus the normal compression. So what I did is I just took my tripod, set my camera up, and I recorded a bunch of scenes in exactly the same frame with all exactly the same settings, trying to get the most exact same lighting conditions, even though I'm out in the sun and it's hard to control, but I really just cannot see any difference in quality in between the light and the normal. I've been sitting here for days looking at these scenes back and forth, and I'm not seeing any difference.
That's the one great thing about this is now that we've got files that I'm not seeing any significant quality loss and the ability to not have to use proxies and post makes the 1.3.1 firmware update totally totally awesome and I'm really glad that we got it. So again guys if you think this video helped you in any way think about going below, subscribing, clicking the notification bell and I'll see you guys on the next video.